Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Applied Multivariate Analysis. And we're in Chapter 3 part of this playlist, which I'm calling Characterizing Multivariate Data. So let's jump into today's topic where we're taking K linear combinations of the elements of Y, where Y is a random vector. <clears throat> let's look at the population parameters first. So let y be a p by 1 random vector with mean vector, mu, and variance covariance matrix sigma. Let a 1, a 2, a k be a set of k p by 1 vectors of constants where all ai are different. The k linear combination can be represented in a matrix form like this. <coughs> First, let's look at them in scalar form. So let Z1, now it's a number, be the vector product of A1 transpose Y. So this creates a number, random variable Z1. Then we do it again, A2 transpose times Y, we get Z2. All the way to uh, ZK, which is equal to AK transpose Y. But if we put the Zs in a vector, so we now have a K by 1 vector, random vector, we replace what the Zs were, then we can write factor out a Y, and this is a matrix, right? So each row is the vector of constants, and it can be generically thought of as A times Y. Now we can calculate the mean of our random vector Z, so the expected value. Remember, we're talking about population <coughs> parameters. So we replace what Z is, which is A times Y, and A is a matrix of constants, and it doesn't play a part in expectation. Expectation is for random variables. So we can factor out the A, and the expected value Y is just a mean vector. So the, the mean of Z is A times mu. Now the population covariance between two of these Z variables, I'm just going to generically call it Z1 and Z2. So the covariance between these, now we replace what Z1 and Z2 are. Now, I almost wish I would have had another um, statement that says the covariance of Z1 and Z2 is equal to this, right? A1 transpose Y, A2 transpose Y. But the constants come out of covariance. So it comes out left as is, and then it's, it's transposed out back. So it's A2 transpose transpose, which is just A2. The covariance of Y is just the sigma. It's the variance covariance matrix. Now, the population correlation between Z1 and Z2, which is denoted by the correlation of Z1 and Z2, and then we replace what Z1 and Z2 are, A1 transpose Y, A2 transpose Y. Now, correlation is the covariance divided by the square root of the product of the variances. And we just looked at the uh, covariance between two objects, which is here. So it's A1 transpose sigma A2. But the variance of A1 uh, transpose Y is like the covariance of itself. So we get this. A1 transpose sigma A1, the variance of A2 transpose Y is this. Now, can is this a le legal way to represent matrices? And the answer is yes. So remember, A is a K by 1, and A2 transpose a 1 by K. So it does conform. You know, And essentially, this is a number. It's a scalar. And this is a number. It's a scalar. Now, the population covariance of a matrix Z <coughs> is this. We replace what Z is, and that's A times Y. But in my mind, I really th like to write it, the covariance, as covariance of two things. And so uh, it's like this, because then, it's for me, it's easier to remember that the A comes out front, and then the A is transposed out back. And then the covariance of Y is just, you know, it's a various covariance matrix. Now, this can be broken down into the, each element of this matrix. So the first row of A, you know, which is A1 transpose, is times this, and then the first column. 
So really this first entry into this matrix is A1 transpose sigma A1. And then you can look at each element of this matrix. It really deals with the, you know, the, the second row times the first column, right? That's what this entry is. And it's really this second row of this matrix and the first column of this matrix, which is this. Now the sample mean vector and covariance matrix, uh, we let yi be the observation of the ith unit or observation or subject. And then we let these k constant vectors, so a1, a2, a to k, it's a set of k p by 1 vectors of constants where the ai's are all different. Now the k linear combinations of the elements of yi in matrix form are this. <clears throat> so uh, zi is a vector. So um, remember we take each observation and we transform it k times. So the z, the results of, of from each yi is a vector. So zi can be thought of as zi1, zi2 to zik, and it's really the a1 transpose y, so that's the first transformation goes here, a2 transpose y goes here, a k transpose goes here. But since notice that the yi is, is the same in each row, and it can be thought of as coming out. So when you do this multiplication, you do multiplication times this, which is you know this result, but a1 transpose, A2 transpose, this, remember these are row vectors now because we transform them. So this is a matrix called A. <clears throat> now, I want to note this matrix here, which we call A. So the result is, you know, ZI is, is A times YI. But then we have to do that for each of the N observations. So we get N vectors of Z. Now, what I was going to say about this matrix A, notice up here that I put th these dashes, and that was to illustrate, you know, that this is really a matrix, because when you see A1 transpose, you know, you have to get away from thinking that's a number, because it's bold, and it's transpose, so that's a, that's a whole row, and I emphasized it here, but generally this is not the notation that's used. It is this. You just say A1 transpose, and you have to know that that's a row vector. Anyway, so that's it. So if we look at Z, the matrix Z, and the columns are these uh, K, you know, linear, you know, these, these K vectors. So Z1, Z2, Z. But then if we put in what each of those are is A, Y1 is Z1. AY2 is Z2 all the way to AYN is ZN. But A can be left factored out of that, and then we're left with the columns, Y1, Y2, YN. But that's really the transpose of our data matrix. So we can um, create this matrix of Zs with the data matrix, so it's just A times Y. So now the sample mean vector would be just the mean, you know, the mean Z bar, it's the mean of mean vector of these, which is really just the sum divided by N, but you can put in a Y, right factor out an A, and then the sum of the YIs divided by N is Y bar. The sample matrix, Z1, Z2, the sample covariance matrix of these, so it'd be uh, S of Z, so that's the Variance covariance matrix of the vectors Z1 through Zn is written like this. So, and then we replace what the Zs are is here. And then we can left factor out an A. And when we take the transpose in, remember it goes to each of those, but they're reversed. So it goes here, and then it's, it's YI transpose, A transpose. But that A transpose can be right factored out, left with this, which is the sample covariance matrix. And then that's it. This is how you define the sample covariance of the vector Z. Um, but you can look at each element in this fashion. So it's the first row times the first column, which is this. Second row times, you know, 
second column, which would be this. Now, quick R illustration. If we look at the MT cars data set, we look at its structure, and this was introduced uh, previously in AMV 18, which stands Applied Multivariate Playlist uh, Video 18 in that playlist. We introduced this Motor Trend Cars Road Test data, where they looked at fuel consumptions and then they had characteristics about the cars. And if we look at the structure of it, STR of empty cars, it's a data frame, 32 observations, 11 variables. But let's grab columns 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, because they're the most continuous-like, and put them in a data matrix called Y. And we need to do that because MT cars is a data frame, and when we do matrix multiplication, vector multiplication, it has to be, what's in, you know, R has to think of it as a matrix. So we call it Y. Head looks at the first six rows of the data matrix or what the object. Now what we do is we're going to grab the eigenvectors of the covariance of Y. And we take the transpose so we can remember the this the vectors are column vectors. But in the theory that we looked at, we need them as row vectors. So we take the transpose of these eigenvectors and put it in A. Then we create Z, which is A times transpose of Y. Now, you have to think about the structure of this. So here, Z, each column is an observation. And, and the rows are the different variables. But remember, the data matrix that we looked at, that we call Y, you know, or the data frame, it's the opposite. The columns are the variables and the rows are the observation so you have to remember that and so to take the, to get a, a mean vector you either have to say row means of z or column means of z transpose and it creates this uh, mean vector but we could also just take a times you know the, the mean vector of y and notice it's the same, minus 270, minus 30, 28, 22. So it's the same. If we look at the covariance of the Z, the trend, remember, R likes the columns to be variables. And so I have to take the transpose of Z to create the columns to be the variables and the rows to be the observations. So if we look at the covariance of it, it creates this matrix. And notice that there's zeros all in the off diagonal. That says that each of the elements of Z, each of the variables of Z are independent. So somehow we've transformed it into uh, a, a matrix of independent variables. And it's more than somehow. This is one of the big theories of multivariate analysis, which we'll start covering in later videos. But we could also, uh, you know, the covariance of TZ is the same as A times the covariance of Y times A transpose. We get the same matrix. And you can look at it using the all equal function. The covariance of, you know, Z transpose is A covariance of Y, A transpose. They're equal, true. Another note, which we will look more at in later videos, if we look at the trace of Z, we get 2102. But if we look at the trace of Y, it's the same. So the sum, the, the sum of the diagonal elements are equal. And that's quite interesting to me. And again, we'll explore that in later videos. All right, well, I'm running long. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.